What's up guys and welcome to another Blender tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to recreate this VJ loop animation. It's really easy to make so not going to take too much of your time and also it's a really simple design. So if you're running Blender on a potato uh, you're going to have no trouble rendering this out. So with that out of the way let's get on with the tutorial. So once you've got Blender open first thing we're going to do is delete the default cube so just hit X and delete. We'll hit Shift A, we'll add a curve and we're just going to add a circle. With the circle selected, hit S and then 8. So we scale up to about 8 meters, just giving us a bit more room to work with. And we're going to be using this circle to create the tunnel that we're going to pass the camera through. So next step, select the circle. And we're going to go to here where it says Object Data Properties. And we're going to tweak some settings in here, which is going to create a tunnel for us. It's worth noting that you're not going to see these options if you've created a mesh. You can only get these options if the object is a curve. Uh, the way you can see if it's a curve or not is this little icon here. If you see, if you hit Shift A, you have two types of circles. You have a curve circle and a mesh circle. So if you have a mesh circle uh, like this one that I've just added, you'll see there's a little triangle indicating it's a mesh. The object properties are just a little bit different. They essentially have different use cases and there's some things you can do in curves that you can't do with meshes. So just make sure it's a curved circle and not a mesh. So that clarified, if you go to object data properties, we're going to change the resolution to 32. What that's going to do, you might not notice it, but you'll see, but you'll see these, the, the circle is a bit janky. All the resolution does is clean that up a bit. Um, obviously the higher your resolution, the more work your computer is going to have to calculate it, but the lower resolution, the more choppy it's going to be. You see that becomes a square if you leave it to one, it just gives you more data points around the curve. So we'll set that to 32 and we'll scroll down here. If you go over here to geometry, this is where we can start turning this curve from a flat 2D shape into a 3D shape. Scroll down and where it says bevel, push up the depth. We'll say about 0.15. We might change this later. And now next step, again, crank up the resolution of the depth. Same sort of situation with the one above. Uh, this is the resolution of the actual geometry of the bevel. So if we crank that up to 32, you'll see we get a nice uh, smoother tunnel now. So just set that to 32 and we can start animating now. So that's pretty much it for our shape. The idea is to set the camera to pass through it. So easiest way I find to do this is to just select your camera and hit Alt G to reset the location and then Alt R to reset the rotation. Now you wanna hit RX 90 so that the camera faces down the Y axis. Let's go into top view. So hit seven on your number pad and then hit G, X, hold control. So we lock onto the grids and we're just gonna move that eight meters along. So it's in the center of the tunnel. Now, if you hit zero on your camera, you'll see where we're getting at here. Now we are inside the tunnel and all we have to do is animate the camera to go around the tunnel to create our animation. Now there's three options you can have for this. You could either just rotate circle, which is probably the easiest way. Just rotate. You can't really see it. There's no shading on the, on the tunnel. But you can essentially just rotate this uh, so it looks like the camera's moving when actually the object's moving. Or you could set the pivot point of the camera to the center and rotate it around. I prefer that method uh, because sometimes motion blur uh, doesn't render properly when it's just the object moving. Uh, it's just a weird in Blender. They may have fixed it by now, but from what I remember, objects weren't rendering with motion blur if you moved them, whereas if you move the camera, motion blur would render. So I prefer to use the pivot point. And then the third option would be to use constraints to push the camera around the curve path. That's a bit more complicated for beginners. So I'm going to use the pivot point method. So we're going to hit shift A and add an empty. So just add a plane axis. Now this is an empty is basically a bit of data that you put into your scene that does not render out. So nothing will be there when you render it out, but you sort of use it to control other objects. So in this case, we're going to use this empty as the pivot point the camera to rotate around. So if you select the camera, select the camera, then hold control and then select the empty. And then you want to hit control P object, keep transform. Now that's parented the camera to the empty and we'll just rename this empty. And now if we rotate the empty, you'll see it rotates the camera around it like that. So let's select the empty, go to the object transform properties. And we're going to rotate it on the Z axis. So just add a keyframe on the Z axis and we're going to bring the timeline up a bit. And just before we do that, actually, I want to go over to here to output properties. And we're just going to change the frame rate to 30 frames per second. When you're working with uh, live visuals, you should in my opinion, you should never go below 30 frames per second. Anything below that just looks a bit choppy in my opinion. So we'll set it to 30 frames per second and we're going to make it a 10 second loop. So we'll make that 300 frames. And now we can just key in this animation. So like I said, go to the start, uh, frame one, click on your 
empty here. Go to the object transform properties. We'll add a keyframe on the Z axis at zero degrees with your mouse hovered over the timeline. Hit shift and then right arrow takes you to the end. That's a handy shortcut. And then hit right arrow again. So we go to frame 301 and we're going to change this to 360 and then apply a keyframe on 301. The reason why we set it to 301 is because if you set it to 300, you end up um, you end up rendering out a duplicate frame, which you don't want to do. It's because the camera will be in the same position at 300 as it is at one, and it will render out frame 300. So you end up having two frames that are the same, and then and when you loop it, it will just look like there's a little stutter. So you want to make sure you just give yourself an extra frame. So that's why we do the last frame at 301. Now you notice the camera sort of speeds up and then slows down as it comes to an end. Uh, we want to change that. By default, Blender sets the animation interpolation to Bezier, which sort of smooths out the, the curves of the animation. So we want to make it linear because it's constantly um, moving and it's not actually starting and stopping. So with your mouse hovered over the timeline, I want you to hit A and then T. And that brings up the interpolation settings and we'll set that to linear. And now it will just constantly go round and round and round. And if you're wondering how I'm getting this see-through, it's just this little thing here. It's x-ray mode, so you can toggle that on and off. So we'll turn that off now. Now that that's done, let's uh, start shading the scene. That was probably a good point to save. So if you go over to here, so just save your scene and we are going to start shading. So you, we need to go into rendered mode. So at the moment we're in solid mode. So in order to start shading, we're just gonna hit Z and then eight, takes you into rendered mode. And now you can see this light that's affecting. We're actually not gonna use this light. So if you just select it, we'll hit X and delete, and we're gonna go over to our world properties and we're gonna make it black. Now you're not gonna be able to see anything. Obviously there's no lighting in the scene. So if you hit zero, that's gonna take you into camera mode and obviously you can't see anything. Like I said, there's no lighting. So let's take our overlays off and we're gonna just drag this in. So what I did, I went to the top corner where that little crosshair goes and then you just drag it in to create a new window. We're going to change this to shader editor. Just hit N on your keyboard to get rid of that menu. You don't need that menu. And we're going to go over here and we're going to hit add a new material onto our Bezier circle. Now what you see here is exactly what you see here. They're just two different ways of doing things. I prefer to work in this way just because it gives you more control over what you can do. So we're going to delete this, hit X and delete, hit shift A. We're going to add a shader. And we're going to add an emission shader to plug the emission into the surface. And now it's all going to turn white because the whole thing is just now emitting light. So and then next step, we're going to hit shift A. And we're going to add a wave texture. So let's pop that here. We'll plug the fact into the color. And now you can see it's created these rings. Now that's a cool animation in itself. You could just leave it like that if you want. I think that looks quite cool. Change it a bit. So we're going to hit shift A now. We're going to add a converter and a color ramp. I'm going to pop that in between. Just crunch this in to get some thin rings and you can crunch the white value in as well. You want to get more if you want to have finer edges, but I think it looks good with a bit of a gradient. So I'm going to leave it like that. This does look really cool, but it's not what I was going for. So I'm going to change, I'm going to change this to Z on the band axis. And now we're getting rings around like that. So now I'm going to pump up the scale so we get more. Something like that, I think. And I'm also going to widen up focal length of our camera. Now you notice we can't find our camera and that's because we parented it to this empty here. Expand that, click on your camera. That's where your camera is. It's just with the camera selected, we're gonna go over here, object data properties for your camera. I'm just gonna widen up that focal length. It's about nine millimeters, I think is good. You can see where we're going with this. Now the problem with this is you can't really see that it's moving because they're just straight lines. So I'm gonna add a little bit of distortion just so you can see that they're moving a bit. And you can play around with these settings uh, to have it look however you like. You don't need to go mad with it, but you can if you want. But I'm just going to say about there. And I'm going to change the scale again, just so we're not getting those bits in the middle. It may be something like that. Looks quite cool. Now I'm just going to change this. So if you click on your color ramp on the white bit, I'm going to change that to a nice cool blue. And I'm going to pump up the emission strength to about eight. And then I'm going to go over to the render settings. We're going to be using EV for this, by the way. Should automatically be like that. But in case it's not, just change that to EV. And we're going to add some bloom. And that's just going to add a nice little glow. I find the EV bloom quite strong. So we're just going to go and drop the intensity down a bit. And also we're going to go down here. Go to color management. If you just change this look to very high contrast, it should just make it pop a little bit more. And also while we're here, we're going to add motion blur as well. I'm just going to change that blue again to a bit. It's worth noting you can always uh, go to your circle in the curve properties. And if you're not happy with the size and stuff like that, you can always play around with the depth and make it 
wider and smaller if you like so just play around with all these settings until you get something that you like and final thing is i'm just gonna go to the camera now and just rotate it up a bit on the y-axis i think just so it's sort of like that and yeah that's pretty much it now so all you have to do is render out the animation if you go over here to your output properties this is where the file is going to come out so just save it somewhere you can find it it's got like a little temp render thing change the file format to ffmpeg video encoding change that to mp4 video codec leave that as h264 and we're going to change the output quality to perceptually lossless and now all you've got to do is go over to render and render animation and you're done all right guys thank you for watching hope you enjoyed the video if you did please leave a like and subscribe and consider supporting me on patreon if you find value in the content that i put out signing up to my patreon will give you instant access to all blender tutorial project files so if you want to get this project file and others um, just support me through there and you'll be able to get that or alternatively you can find them on my website along with all my other work you can find that at nemotion.co.uk